Okay then guys, so we're going to break down the Michael Jackson black or white video. I know that for some of you this is not going to apply, so for those of you who are starting in year 10 or who are taking your exams in 2021, then this is not going to apply to you guys, okay? But for those of you who are taking your exams in 2020, this may apply to you. So we start off with our opening screen. This title screen makes it appear more like a film, and in fact, in terms of how it was marketed, it was actually shot as a short film to be released on the Dangerous album along with other selected tracks that were made into more sort of feature film music videos. Now the camera movement's very quick, it zooms in from the atmosphere down into the globe, down into a country, down into a particular um, street and then zooms very quickly through the streets to find a particular house. Now the street is very stereotypical, this obviously indicates that it could be anywhere in the world, it's designed to sort of make the audience feel like it could be their house. The interior of the house, again, is, is designed to represent most houses of the period, but it does suggest an element of wealth and comfort, so this could refer to a middle class family. It's a very common generalisation um, at the time, because it, particularly at the time, it was the the idea that the upper classes held sort of more divisive beliefs and obviously that's something that Jackson was aiming to um, sort of combat. Now upstairs we see a contrast from the family downstairs because we see a child sort of um, rocking out so it was a this is what it would be referred to in the the sort of time that the video was made. Um, we realised that the child is Macaulay Culkin, so he would have been very recognisable and very well known for him his film Home Alone, which came out just a year earlier. Now the bobbleheads that we see sitting on top of the sound system, they also date the videos to the 90s. These were very common for young people to collect, so we're really not only dating the video, but also showing things that were recognisable for young people at the time. When the father comes in, we get a low angle worm's eye view shot, so it makes him look more aggressive and more imposing as he opens the door. It sort of acts as a point of view shot because we're in the position of Culkin's character here, and so this might be designed to give a childlike perspective on the video, which again is something that Jackson was very well known for. Now when we flick to Macaulay Culkin, he's viewed from this high angle shot, making him seem smaller and vulnerable, and it's designed to get the audience feeling sorry for him. We also feel sorry for him when the door closes because we've got a visible poster of Michael Jackson on the back of the door. This not only indicates his status as a role model of the period, and I know that sounds strange for some of you guys who are aware of the controversy surrounding Jackson, but he really was a sort of role model for the period. And that's something that we have to remember because we need to take this video in context and not sort of be clouded by the things that we believe about him today okay because we've just got to be impartial when we're writing our answers for our exams it also anchors the video because we're aware that this is a michael jackson video and we do feel sorry for Culkin because that's one of the things that falls off the door and smashes now the close-up that we get of Culkin makes him seem very similar to the character in home alone it implies that he's got a plan and that it's likely to be a very crazy plan we get an extreme close-up of the guitar as well. It makes it seem like something precious. It's also very similar to the one that Michael J. Fox had in Back to the Future, so we've got another element of intertextuality here. Now, as Culkin sets up the speakers, we've got further intertextuality to Home Alone because it's very similar to him um, sort of creating the traps that he does in the film against the two burglars. His family, though, seem very, very ignorant of what's going on. The paper that his mother is reading, though, gives us a little bit more context. The period that the video was released in was one that was very interested in extraterrestrial life, so we're taking things that people are interested in in their day-to-day -day lives and putting them into this video. The humour of the video we see through... Um, this opening scene where we have the speaker turned up to the are you nuts level. It's a very common trope of comedy to include references like this for the audience. It makes it sort of more slapstick humour, but it also shows that the audience are probably very young because they're going to find this funnier than the older generation. Now we get another extreme close-up of Macaulay Culkin, which is designed to focus on the sunglasses. They initially create enigma because we can't see his eyes, so it's very difficult to know whether he's giving us direct mode of address. But it's also something that fits into this genre of rock, and it could be another reference to Back to the Future as well. Now Michael Jackson was well known for his very iconic dress codes, and one of them 
featured not only a singular glove but also featured a lot of black so we've got again more of a reference to Jackson here through the dress codes that Corkin is now putting on. The iridescent light behind Macaulay Culkin suggests power, but it's also signifying sort of neon lights, which were very commonly associated with 80s and 90s music videos. And the humour that we saw earlier is continued when the um, sound sort of propels his father out of the living room. Now, it's a, it's incredibly exaggerated. And again, this is a reason why perhaps it's a younger audience who are going to find this entertaining rather than an older audience, because this is very sort of childish humour. Now, the scene where we see the outline of the globe could be referencing the film E.T. through the fact that the father passes in front of the moon and he's silhouetted very briefly, which sort of refers to the iconic imagery from that film as well. And to end the opening scene, and you can see that from the timestamp on this video that we've had nearly two minutes of this opening scene, and this is the shorter version of the music video. So it's still taking quite a bit of time to, to view, um, but it's a bird's eye view shot, and this adds sort of wisecrack humour to bring more entertainment. Now, the humour not only, again, identifies the demographic, but it could reflect Jackson's childish personality as a whole. Now, when we flick to the different setting, the music actually starts to begin. So as we said, it's nearly two minutes into the video before the music actually starts. The landscape that we see here acts as an establishing shot to identify the location. We know that we're somewhere different compared to where we were at the start of the video. And this is further anchored by the fact that we see lions who who are on the right hand side of the screen here. They're very recognisable symbols of locations such as Africa. And this is again backed up by the tribe of warriors that we can see coming towards them. Now the warriors are dressed very stereotypically and they seem to have little reference to what comes before we see this. So they've got no reference to the scene we've seen in that sort of American street, which provides enigma. Now, now when we get a mid to close up shot where we see the warriors in more detail, we can see the tribal paint um, all over their bodies and their shield. Now, at the time, this would have been very convincing, but in today's society, it might not go down as well. And it could be seen as cultural appropriation because of the poor quality of the, the dress codes and the poor quality of the paint. So this might not stand up in today's society. But again, we've got to sort of separate this modern view from the contemporary view and the view at the time it was created because this is considered one of the traditional music videos for you guys to study so you've got to sort of understand how it would have been received at the time as well as how we feel about it today. Now the enigma that we've had going through this opening little bit of the song is answered when the father lands in the middle of the sort of planes. He acts as a form of binary opposition because he's contrasting against the warriors who we can see in the center of the shot here. And we finally get Jackson appearing in the video. Now he stands out as well because he's dressed in a sort of monochromatic colours. And that again sort of not only makes him stand out and makes him seem brighter but contrasts him to those around him. He's got his iconic, iconic elements of dress codes including the white glove that he's got on his right hand. Now more of his iconic style is seen through his trousers. They're very similar to those that were used during his bad performance. And the lighting that we can see around him almost appears to be high key. It's, it makes him glow a little bit. And so this obviously makes him more of a focus because it's where our eyes are drawn to most. It also illustrates the narrative of the video because he's using elements of the native dance within his own dancing as well, sort of showing that there's very little difference between the two. Now the next dancers that we see are traditional Thai dancers. So the backdrop seems more simplistic in comparison to the African planes that we've just seen, but the costume makes them stand out. And the scenery changes again to show Native American, Plains Native Americans. The dress codes again, very stereotypical, less historically accurate than would be shown today, which is why it may not go down as well in today's society. Because if you're making a video that uses different cultures today, you really are sort of held to account socially um, by your audience to make sure that it's incredibly accurate and also that it's necessary. Now there's less of an emphasis in the centre shot on the dance here and instead we've got Jackson and a group of Native Americans who are, appear to be on top of some sort of raised platform. Now the settings is the iconic Vasquez rocks in California so for some people in the demographic this would provide a rel um, sort of something that's relatable and something that they can connect to. 
Um, and then we have a low angle shot looking up at these rocks, but also viewing the horses here as well. This adds drama, it adds action, it adds tense, uh, sort of tension and suspense, which makes this more entertaining and exciting. Now, Jackson can be seen from a bird's eye view as the camera sort of zooms out. He's dancing with a young girl, and this was something that was very sort of stereotypical for him at the time. Um, but nowadays, it would be viewed with the same sort of controversy that we know Jackson for. Now, there's an Indian dancer in the next shot, which is viewed standing in the middle of a very busy street. And when Jackson appears with her, they dance together. In contrast to all of the other people that he's danced with so far, we've got very low-key lighting here, not only through the characters themselves, but through the setting as well. As we zoom in closer on them, we can see that the dancer is a traditional Odissi dancer from India. And again, Jackson incorporates different elements of her style, as he has done with the other dancers, into his routine to signify the little difference between them. And we get further transition from this scene to the next, where he's viewed with Russian dancers who are dressed in Ukrainian clothing. They're performing a Hopak dance. And the colours are, again, very low-key, contrasting um, sort of the very bright white that we've had from Jackson earlier with the only colour that we can see here on their sort of trousers, which are, is that red colour. Now, towards the end of this scene, they encircle Jackson, which adds evidence to the idea that he's at the centre of the video. He's at the centre of this message as a whole. And we see the snowy location being used in a transition because as the camera zooms out we reveal that that scene happened inside of a snow globe so this is um snow globes are not common anymore but they were a very recognizable trinket of the 90s and they were sort of a collectible item within the 90s as well and we have this scene here where the two babies are sitting on top of the globe now they're physically different not only in terms of their appearance but specifically their significant but they're physically different to signify that it doesn't, as the lyrics say, it doesn't matter whether you're black or white. Individuals don't look alike. We'd all be boring if we were all alike. And actually, it's about unity and coming together. Now, Jackson appears to be walking through fire during the bridge of the song, which could be used to represent the anger and hatred that individuals face when they're not tolerant of each other. And it almost makes this this part of the song the main message, particularly when we see the images behind Jackson change to show images of hatred. So we've got a burning cross here, which is normally associated with the Ku Klux Klan, and it can be seen behind Jackson and through Jackson, which links to his own culture, obviously, when he was growing up as a black man. We then see a tank which is overlaid with the American flag, symbolising America's role in warfare, which could suggest that um, Michael Jackson is against this and it could be a way of influencing his demographic to be against this as well. And we get a mock rap section that's performed by Culkin and a group of children. Again, the emphasis on the children can reflect the fact that children are normally very innocent and they're normally more tolerant of each other. It's as we grow older that we become less and less tolerant. Now, the setting for the scene has links to Harlem, which is, again, normally associated with the rap genre. And we've got more stereotypes that are emphasised here through the dress codes of the children themselves. The rap ends with a shot of Jackson and Culkin together with another child. And again, it emphasises the difference between them, not only in terms of how they look, but also the fact that they are together and they're unified, which is the overall message of this song. Now, as we come into the last part of the song, we can see that Jackson's standing on top of a structure. There's enigma at this point because we don't know where he is, but the fact that he's on his own short sort of makes this part of the song again significant because when he's pointing, he's pointing directly at the camera, so it's as if he's talking directly to us. The camera then reveals that the statue that he's standing on is Lady, Lady Liberty's torch. So again, it's going to be recognisable, not just to an American demographic, but to the demographic sort of the world over. And we've got similar recognisable structures within the background. So we can see Big Ben, the Eiffel Tower, indicating that this is a message that needs to be heard worldwide. Now, as the chorus fades out, the emphasis is placed on individuals who merge from one to another to make them... Um, to make people more accepting because it's showing different people from different races, different backgrounds. And in fact, some of the individuals that are featured include Tyra Banks. Um, so they provide a sort of element of celebrity endorsement to the video as a whole. 
Now the final scene of the video reveals the crew wrapping up the shoot and sort of gives the demographic a behind the scenes look. Now where the video ends here is the end of the short version of the video. As I said at the beginning there was a longer there was a longer version of this video uh, made and it was released on the sort of Dulux version of the album along with a few others that were made into sort of feature film music videos. Um I'm not going to go through the analysis to the longer version because you don't you genuinely don't need to know the longer version as long as you know that it existed. Controversy surrounded that longer version even at the time because Jackson um sort of leaves the set morphs into a, a panther and then morphs back into himself and starts dancing down a dark street where he sort of smashes up windows and cars um and it was considered controversial not only because it was sort of considered to be inciting his audience into being a little bit vandalistic themselves but also because he overly sexualized his dancing in that particular scene if you have any other questions or concerns about uh, anything that we've sort of gone through today you want to ask anything then pop them in the comments section below you can get in touch with me through twitter at media underscore revision and i'd really appreciate it if you guys could subscribe so that you know every time i release a new video and I'll see you guys later for the next video.